Joshua Bassett, an extremely talented actor, a wonderfully, incredibly talented singer, songwriter, and above all, I'd say a mental health king. I've been such an avid supporter of this man. I think his music speaks for itself. I think the way he carries himself speaks for itself. I'm just a huge fan of all of the above when it comes to Joshua Bassett. And I, I love that we're all waiting for an album from Joshua, right? And he makes sure to let us know the album is still coming, but here's a little EP while you wait. And it's a six song EP. Joshua's dropped so much music, not even including the self-titled EP. If you just go back to the Crisis EP, along with a couple of the singles that he's dropped since, the Feel Something Doppelganger, and you count the, the fact that we're getting six full songs on here, all that is essentially a full album. So the fact that we're getting all this music and he's also working on a full length album that I would imagine won't include any of this music. How lucky are we? How fortunate are we that that's still coming as well? And all of this is just kind of a warm up. Uh, I'm really excited to get into this, guys. I love the aesthetic of this. I'm actually obsessed with the aesthetic of this and all the promo to it. Um, sad songs in a hotel room. I love the, that title. Some of my best songwriting has been done in a hotel room when you're often at your saddest because you feel sort of at your loneliest. Being in a hotel room is a really vulnerable thing uh, because you're, especially when you're someone that's you know single and sitting there by yourself, it really makes you think harder because it's not home. It's not home, right? It's the anti-home. So many people have lived in that space and it'll really, really get you thinking about everything sad in your own life. Uh, so sad songs in a hotel room, Six tracks, I haven't heard any of them. I didn't hear Smoke Slow. I was very much waiting for this project for that. I uh, say we dive in. I'm ready to be ear blessed, heart blessed, soul blessed, all of it. All right, the first track is Sad Songs and a whole title on the title track. We're in the world, the same ones we left on the hotel floor. Just one year ago. I see Joshua storytelling. His songwriting has really, really evolved all the way from the, that first EP to the more recent stuff has just been like a whole new level, I feel like. And I've talked about that a bit as I've heard it, but just painting the scene. We already, and he's already cited a memory, a specific memory, right? So now we already feel like he's longing for something. He's reminiscing on something. And there's already a sadness buried in that. The song is called Sad Songs, right? In a hotel room. And he's literally talking about something that happened a year ago. And he's wearing something that reminds him of what happened a year ago. And he's just like stuck in that exact memory. And that's such a painful place uh, to live in. It all went to shit. It's huh. kind of depressing being here alone. I miss you, so I pick up the phone. He's down bad. He's down bad. He's by himself in this hotel room and he's calling them. He's calling them. Pick up the phone, he's saying. They're not answering. They're probably not answering for a reason, too. Oh, Joshua, I'm sorry. Champagne, many pop bottles are gone. That harmony back there. I've got a balcony room with a view. Uh. Velvet curtains are closed. Singing sad songs in a hotel room. Man, that harp. That high harmony back there. The way he's bending that melody to sort of uh, give him this really cool, unique call and response that. That velvet curtains and then do 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 and then he goes the where I once held you and then what comes after that and then he does, he did the same thing on champagne and it's like he does it three times and then follows it with this uh, response to that it's really really cool I don't even it, it kind of blew my mind there because I never heard him play with a chorus like that before play with a melody like that before. <laughs> That's classic Joshua right there. The neighbors are knocking, they just want to sleep. It's 3 a.m. while my guitar gently weeps. Isn't that sad, too? The neighbors are knocking and they can't sleep, and it's it's not for the reasons he'd, he'd probably prefer. It's 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 because his good, it's cause he's playing sad songs on his guitar. Oh, that's so sad. Balcony room with the view. This is such a good chorus. Singing sad songs in a hotel room. I love that so much. 
champagne, many bar bottles are done. I've got a balcony room with a view. He drank all the champagne. So many hotel references as well, like with the robe in the beginning. When you're at your saddest, you're always going to, especially when you're at your saddest due to the results of feelings that are coming over you that have to do with a former relationship and a former loved one. It's the thinking about the specifics. It's, a, it's the, the thinking about the specific times you had together, specific like looking through magazines that you had planned vacations towards. Like Things like that are just the saddest They'll get you down the worst. And that's when you end up writing a beautiful song like this. That chorus, man, his songwriting has just come such a long way. That's a sound that's so good for him and so suited to him. Uh, so the fact that he made that chorus so clever uh, and found something that's so, so catchy in a real songwriter way is a really, really great quality for that song. All right, LA, track Dos. I just gotta get out of this town Lately everyone's bringing me down I've heard this. Uh, I think I did this on Patreon as a custom request, if I'm not mistaken, but a while ago. Uh, and I haven't really revisited it in a minute, but I, m I remember that melody. I remember him talking about L.A. and that line hitting particularly hard because of obviously everything with... So I must have heard it after the Crisis EP because I remember that just making so much sense and feeling like a song he wrote around that time with everything just coming down on him so hard and feeling like he needed to completely get away from everything involving like the LA scene. I totally recognize that melody. It's so recognizable, uh, but I haven't really revisited those. So some of these lyrics I probably forgot, but I definitely remember like that part. He's sitting on a piano performing it. I just gotta get out of this town. Lately everyone's bringing me down. My father told me not to cry in front of my mom. I said it's time to grow up. Uh -huh. Preconditioned, already preconditioned to make to feel like that's not an okay thing to do. Like you should feel some sort of shame for feeling your own emotions, and that's such a hard thing to battle through, especially when you're young. Guess I've run out of things I can say. That's how it is. If there's nothing else to say, just leave the situation. But nobody leaves. <laughs> yeah, we're all only actors. Doll, who do you know? Oh. And when did you know them? Now where you from? But where are you going? How can you help me get to where I need? God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm remembering all these lyrics. This is such a good song lyrically. Just the whole LA thing is not meant for him it's not about where you're from it's about where you're going no one cares about who you are as a person it's all like doggy dog like what's you know what your goal is like what's next in life everyone's an actor because everyone's pretending everyone's pretending everyone's faking something and um joshua is someone that's so he has so much depth to him and that's what matters most to him so it's not it's about where are you from for him it's not about where are you going in this really really superficial way uh, these lyrics are this is one of his best written songs I remember feeling that way when I first heard it too I just gotta get out of this town lately everyone's bringing me down <laughs> it's so ironic <laughs> the sound of the song I just gotta get I say it's ironic because the song sounds so cozy it's got this cozy sound to it, uh, but at the same time, that's not like he's feeling so much pressure to remove himself from the situation that it's just not for him. Hopefully, I mean, he was set me free after he got out of L.A. You get it. Used to it. Track three. I'm not surprised you didn't go. Oh, no. This is a sad, <laughs> sad when song. When I almost died, you didn't care at all. Fuck. I want to enjoy the song because of this right here, but it's 
but it's fucking so sad. Even everything he's saying, he does throw in that, I, I blame it on us being kids. So that is kind of a forgiveness sort of right there. That is like him letting go of it all in the middle of a song that's really messed up. Um, especially when you start off with saying, like, I almost died, you didn't care, and you left me for them and with one eye over your shoulder. And, and there's the, the talking about his mom here, which brings it back to Set Me Free. It brings me back to that whole crisis. It brings me back to that whole EP, actually. This feels like we're, we're part of that situation again, except we have, like, much more piano going on here. We have much more of a sadder hotel feeling which is obviously what he was going for when the song started i'm like man these songs are so sad and i gotta remind myself that's kind of the whole point of it all the way that he delivers this i guess i got used to it right here so clever i guess i got used to it it kind of speaks it because he's numb to it you get used to someone's you know just someone's bullshit someone's toxicity someone just completely taking advantage of you you get numb to it, and that's exactly what this song is, and eventually you learn to let it all go because you realize that, uh, you know, I let a lot of it happen. But, like, a lot of that, that's tough because it's not your fault. Like, you shouldn't be at blame for someone else just completely stringing along your emotions and knowingly doing so, it seems like the case in this song. I love the pianos in this song, but on this album, the whole album just feels like such a, I guess it, like an intimate experience, which would feel like the point, I guess. It feel like you're listening to this in a hotel room. All right, Smoke Slow, this was the single. Let's hear it. We're buying more time while we kill ourselves as we both inhale, making believe there's a future. Is it naive to think we could work? All that we are is all that we'll ever be. Oh, wow. he's the one waiting at home. Hold on, hold on, Ed Sheeran Jr. What? A, what? Hold on, what was that? We'll ever be, cause he's the one waiting at home. She holds my guitar as I plug out a melody. Take your time while you mind and smoke slow. Even his inflection and the way he's pronouncing it. Oh, Joshua, what is this? What are all these different things you're doing on this album? I love that part of this song so much. Slow. This whole song feels like a metaphor, especially playing off of the whole smoke thing. Obviously, like I don't think he's necessarily endorsing cigarettes here. I think that it's because he mentioned nicotine too. Uh, I think he's just saying that I think he's acknowledging that this is a bad situation because he's even saying that this person's going to go home to somebody else. So let's take our time and smoke slow. Let's sit here, smoke these cigarettes slowly so we have more time together while we write this song real quick um, and, and have this moment together uh it's unfortunate that you know uh you're going home to that person but it's probably for the best because you i, I have i can get addicted to you too easily because you're like a cigarette and this situation is like that i think it's just comparing the overall situation to smoking and nicotine uh, and it's a really clever way to write that song and again it's like such an Ed Sheeran sound and I love that sound coming off of the piano bells in this song and again it's a sad song so it works perfectly, even though it doesn't sound sad at all. It's got that Ed Sheeran upbeat, the folky singer songwriter sound that I love, but it's all, it's sad in the lyricism because it's a situation where he acknowledges he, he can't, it's not something that's going to go past this smoking session that they're having, quote unquote. Uh, and acknowledging that kind of is sad because you know that there's nothing there long term. All right, Lifeline, track five. Oh, more acoustic. Okay, I can't hear what that voice is saying. It sounds like a voice memo or a voicemail or something. More like a voice memo, maybe. I did read, uh, jo I did see Joshua tweeted that this that was his mom. So now I'm scared. I'm petrified of where the song goes. She pictures life without a son. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. That 
That's haunting. Those O's are haunting. Oh, I like when he goes down. Save me. Now I'm facing. I've been praying to a God I've never known. I can't do this on my own. Wow, it's like when you're facing to a God I've never known because it's not something you ever believed in. But when you're facing, and if you know Joshua's background, if you know what he's been through, you know that he had a literal near death experience and that's what he's talking about on this song and the fact is you know mom was there for him we love that so much when you're like literally facing something that feels like it's going to end your life end your world whatever it might be just like it's it's to you something absolutely devastating you start reaching out to things you never thought you'd reach out to before all of a sudden you're praying to a guy that you've never known that's um i had to pause and take a second because i this is uh this the sound, just the sound of this, what this potentially, what we know it's about so far is, um, I want to say like could be his heaviest song, but he's he's written some pretty heavy ones. So let's keep going. And I'll be fine for tonight with you by my side. Oh my, well, don't you know you're my life line? <laughs> Was this for his mom? Shaking in my bones Lady But on I can't do this on my own Try Not to cry I won't say goodbye Just yet So hold on to my hand Or I'll be fine <laughs> it's, He's the one comforting his mom When when You know When he's Facing these This Really just potentially disastrous situation for him. Yes, yeah, this distance we're drifting from difference of opinion. And no one else could ever save me. I've been praying. Ooh, my lifeline. Oh. Don't you know you're my lifeline? My eyes already hurt because I like slept for like two hours, um, and you know wanted to get up in time to do this album for you guys. But uh, that that is the KO for me. I can't believe there's a song after that. I cannot believe that there's a song after that because how do you listen to that and have any sort of emotional stability to move on um, to the next song? Thanks, Joshua, for not making this the last song. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know he mentioned, uh, you know, wishing that he reached out more, or just did his son duties better, and I'm sure that that whole experience uh, combined with this song, I'm, I would imagine that they're in a pretty good place right now, him and his mom, so um, I, I, I love that. I love that. Okay, let's... Maybe someday we'll all fade away And the weight of the world won't be mine And maybe I'll say at the end of the day Who I am made it all worth the while well, His harmonies have reached a, just a different level lately All in due time His voice is so beautiful on this album it always all the ways is. that have changed I'm still cleaning up all the mess that I made Just cause it's over it don't mean I'm over it now just cause, just cause it's over don't mean I'm over it now just cause it gets better doesn't mean it's better right now bringing the, the play on the lyricism uh, just real real raw emotions there oh, feeling wow that fire thing is a metaphor for the situation he was in he's I am made it all. He's burned so bad from it. Scars will be stories I tell. All in due time. All in due time. Oh, all in due time. 
That is okay. So I know that I said <laughs> Lifeline should have been a closer because of how painful it was and the fact that we all have to be subjected to somehow make our way through another song after that is just it's it should be illegal. But that's the perfect closer because it's obviously like short, sweet, but it also and you get to just get blessed with those vocals and those harmonies and him riding those high notes. Uh, but that wraps up his pain experience and talking about the fire and the being burned, but that really representing uh, him, his experiences really in life. Like, I think it covers a broad range of what he's really dealt with. And I think that it just represents the possibility to move forward at some point, the possibility to heal from all of these scars and the third degree burns and everything he's dealt with. There's the pos- like, I think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel in this song, but it's not necessarily right now. Like he's going to feel what he feels right now. Yeah, eventually it'll get better, but not right now. And and he's accepting that and he's living in that. And and accepting that is part of the healing process. You can't just ignore those things. And this whole album, you know, sad songs in a whole time. Every song is so sad and I should have expected that. I guess I wasn't fully prepared as much as I should have anyway. And sad songs in a whole time room. This album as a whole, uh, these these six songs to all be as sad as they are. There's not a lot of artists that can do this. There's not a lot of artists that are earnest and honest with themselves enough, vulnerable enough, and ha- have the personal life experiences at the same time. It's got to be all these things that come together and have the talent as well and the songwriting ability. And, and, and at the young age that he is as well, there's not a lot of artists that can pull together six songs like this. So I'm so glad Joshua decided to share that with us. I'm not surprised at all because that's what he does. He wears his heart on his sleeve and shares that with us, with his fan base. Uh, and it feels like more of a friendship. And I just absolutely adore that about him. Uh, and, and to have these songs, we're all really, really fortunate to have them uh, because a lot of us are really sad and deal with our own stuff. And to be able to listen to an artist that puts their, you know, puts their life and their heart out there on the line and their experiences out there, it makes us realize, yeah, we're not alone in dealing with really, really fucked up stuff. And, you know, if, if this person can be so open with it, then we can be open with our stuff and we can learn to heal and talk to people about what we're going through and talk to the right people about what we're going through and and heal how we need to heal as well. And I feel like this album is part of a healing process for Joshua, and I love that for him. Uh, I, you guys know, I am a sad song, just connoisseur. I will eat up sad songs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day long. These are tremendous sad songs. I'll give you my favorites on the album there. Sad songs in a hotel room, smoke slow, lifeline, all in due time. Uh, just absolutely adore these tracks, but all six of them are really great. Uh, and this has me, I'm so excited for, I can't believe we're still getting a full length album. I know I mentioned that at the top of the video here, but for that to still be coming on top of this, Joshua just continues to um, bless us all. And, what a tremendous, tremendous human being.